Hey everyone, welcome to the Stitch Sessions, where we dive into all things to do with crafting with crochet. And if you're new here, my name is Karen, and I love taking you through all of my crochet adventures. So this week, what we're gonna work on is a puff stitch hexagon motif. And so you can see it right there. And it's one of the granny motifs, I would say. Now I do already have a hexagon motif tutorial on the channel, and I'll leave it linked for you in the description box down below. But it involves taking a circular shape and shaping it into a hexagon. Now, in this particular tutorial, we are going to be using the puff stitch. So you can see it looks a little bit more cushy. It's a little bit airy because of course we are creating the granny corners or the traditional granny corners. It's kind of reversible. It looks as similar on the back as it does on the front. I just have to sew in a few ends there. And you can do all kinds of things with this motif. Um, you can create uh, quite a few of these and put them together to create a blanket. I would definitely use some, you know, nice cushy soft yarn because it's a very dense stitch. So it can create a very dense fabric. Um, you can do this in a cotton yarn and do things like coasters, which is what I'm going to do with mine. So this is just the base shape, but once I take you through it on my end, this time around, I'm gonna add a little border as well to create a little coaster step. Now you can make a trivet out of this as well if you want it to be a little bit larger. Just remember, anytime you're creating things to do with a moisture or heat, definitely use 100% cotton yarn because that will definitely withstand high heat and moisture. Isn't that pretty? So let's dive in. I'm gonna show you the materials just to gather together to create your motif. And then we'll get stitching up our puff stitch hexagon. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm using some leftover yarn here. Now this is the Caron Cotton Cakes and I just have some of it here. I'm not sure if they've brought this back yet. Every year they do a different version of the cakes and there's always some kind of a cottony blend. This one was called Cotton Cakes and it contains 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. They come in 250 gram cakes, which contain 485 meters or 530 yards. These were great cakes to create all kinds of projects. And for those of you that just saw the pinwheel pillow from our Pillow Talk crochet series this year. This is the yarn I used to create the coral colored uh, triangles. And actually, in case you're wondering, the color is called Coral Rose. So that is the yarn I'm gonna be using. It is a medium four weight yarn. And so the hook size I'm gonna be using is a 5.5 millimeter hook and it's also known as an I or a size nine, okay? And as always for any project, make sure you have a pair of scissors on hand and a yarn needle to weave in your ends. Remember, a yarn needle is different than a thread needle. The I is a lot larger. All right, well, let's get cooking. Let's start stitching up our hexagon. So we're going to create our hexagon from the center out. We're gonna be working in the round. And so we're gonna start with a cinch circle. So I'm just going to wrap that around my two fingers there and I'm holding that to my thumb and forefinger and I'm gonna reach in and pull up a loop. Kind of like you're gonna do a slip knot, but you're not going to resolve this shut. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and do a chain one in here. It's a little wonky. And that will secure my cinch circle. And then I just wanna make sure that I keep the tail on the outside. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna proceed to chain an additional four. So we have one, two, three, and four. This will count as a double crochet chain one. So that very first chain we did, we're not really gonna count it as anything, just used it to secure the circle. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to place a double crochet into this circle here. So we're gonna insert, pull up a loop. It's a little wonky, but just hang in there and then resolve like a regular double crochet. Make sure to always trap this tail in to your stitch because we will need that tail in order to cinch our center shut. So technically we have a double crochet, so three of these chains, 
and then chain one and then another double crochet. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna chain one and double crochet into the circle. Just like that. So you can see we're getting some spaces between our double crochets. And we repeat this, chain one and double crochet. So we're gonna keep repeating this until we have a total of 12 stitches. So the double crochet counts and so does the chain one. So you're basically going to have six sets of double crochet and chain one. Okay, so go ahead and do that until you have 12 stitches and then I'll take you through the second round. Okay, so my last stitch was a chain one and I now have 12 stitches all together. Now I'm going to take my tail and I'm just going to pull that, see how it cinches it? And don't be afraid to like really pull until you feel it slip through and it cinches our circle shut. So now we're going to close off round number one by finding the top of the third chain, which is right there. We're going to insert our hook and we're going to slip stitch to join. Just like that. And round one is complete. So right now it just looks like a circle with some spaces in between the stitches. And that is exactly what we want. So round one is complete. Now we're gonna go on to round number two, and this is where the hexagon shape will be formed. Okay, so what we're gonna do actually is we're going to slip stitch into the next chain space there. So we always wanna work out of the chain space, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna chain three and this chain three is really not gonna count as anything, it's just giving us uh, the height within which to work our stitches. Because in this round, we're now gonna start diving into our puff stitch. So we're gonna create our first puff stitch. Now I call these kind of mini puff stitches and you'll see why in a moment. What we're gonna do is we're going to yarn over, insert our hook and pull up a loop, but we wanna pull it up as tall as that chain three is. Okay, then we yarn over and I like to secure mine with my thumb there or my index finger. I'm gonna insert and pull up another loop. Okay, so that's the second one. Now I'm gonna do that a third time and insert, pull up a loop. And now you're gonna have two, four, six, seven loops on your hook. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all of the loops except the very last one. So you have two loops on your hook and now you're gonna yarn over and pull through both of them. And that is your first puff stitch. Now, I call it a mini puff stitch because technically a full puff stitch would have you repeating that pulling up of the loop five times. So it definitely uses up a lot of yarn. In fact, I have a basic tutorial on the puff stitch and I'll leave that in the description box down below. If you just wanna explore the stitch on its own, cause I've done it in a flat project, this one we are doing it in the round. Okay, so we've done our first puff stitch and we are creating our first corner in our hexagon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain two, one and two, and then we're gonna go into the next space and we're now gonna place two puff stitches. So we have one, two, three, we resolve, and then we place one more puff stitch into the same chain two space. So we're just starting to form our shape a little bit. Okay, so we've got two puff stitches, and now we're gonna chain two. It's gonna give us our corners, see that? And now we're gonna go into the next chain space and do the same thing. So basically you're gonna place two puff stitches into every chain space. And before you go into the next chain space, you're going to chain two. Now I did just put one in the first space, but you'll see why when we come back around. So go ahead and finish that repeat. Two puff stitches, chain two, two puff stitches, chain two. So you're working into all of your spaces. Okay, so I just finished doing two puff stitches into the last space. Now I'm gonna chain two, 
And remember, we had only done one in the first space, so we're just going to finish off by placing the second puff stitch in there. And whenever I'm working granny type motifs, I like to do that because that way I finish in a corner and then I can begin in a corner. So right now, all we're going to do is we're going to find the top of that puff stitch right there. And we're going to slip stitch to join our round. So round number one is complete. And so we've got six clusters of these puff stitches. So the chain twos have created our little corners. They're a little subtle at the moment, but they will kind of take form as we go into round number three. So round number two, on each side, you have two stitches. I'm not really gonna count the chain twos. So two stitches times six sides, that means we have 12 stitches, 12 official stitches at the end of round two. So let's go on to round number three and you're really gonna see the hexagon take its shape. Okay, so to begin round number three, I'm gonna just slip stitch over into the chain two space and we're gonna chain three to begin, which is how I begin every round. And this is technically now, the chain two has become our corner space, so we're gonna create our corner. So we're gonna create a partial corner by placing one puff stitch. And then we're gonna chain two, one, two, and then we're gonna go back into the same space and place two more puff stitches. So remember that first one I do is always just a partial corner. So there's one, and then I place the second one. Two and three. Okay, but you can see the corner is taking shape. Now what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna work into this space between these two puff stitches. So we're just going to yarn over and go into the space. So I'm not trying to work into the stitch, I wanna work into the space. And I like doing it this way because that way the puff stitches nestle nicely into each other. Okay, just like that. So you work one puff stitch between the two stitches of the previous row or round. And now we have our chain two space, which is a corner space. And so then we go directly into there and every time you come across a corner, you're gonna place two puff stitches, chain two, and then two more puff stitches all into that same space. So we've got two puff stitches, chain two, and now we're gonna go back into that space. So your chain two spaces are now kind of stretching a little bit and that's okay. One, and then we have one, two, three. So this is our first full corner there. So see, every corner is gonna get two puff stitches, a chain two, and two puff stitches. So you can see now our side is increasing in its length. So there's that corner there. So coming out of the corner, you have two puff stitches here. You just wanna nestle one puff stitch in between those two there. And that is now what you're gonna repeat all the way around until you get to the end of round number three, okay? So each side now has one, two, three, four, five stitches. Five stitches times six sides. You should end up having 30 stitches at the end of round number three, okay? So the next one is the corner space. So you're gonna do your two puffs, chain two, two puffs, one stitch, repeat all the way to the end, and I will meet you at the end of round number three. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of round number three. Now I'm back to that first corner, so we have to put one more puff stitch in here. Remember that chain three doesn't really count as anything. So we're gonna yarn over, insert, and pull up three times. 
And we've now completed our last stitch. And now you just find the top of that first puff stitch and you slip stitch to join. And round three is now complete. And your corners and your sides are now becoming much more prominent. See that? It just has this pretty little center here. They almost look like hearts there. So round three is complete. I'm going to take you through one more round, which is round number four, because now you should be able to see that every corner space, you know what to do, puff stitch twice, chain two, two puff stitches. So what I want to just show you is see how now we have more stitches along our sides. Generally, what we're going to do as we build up more rounds. So let us just slip stitch over into the chain two space and let's begin round number four. So we're going to chain three as usual. Okay, and we do our usual puff first and then our chain two. You'll get really comfortable with these puff stitches after a while. Chain two. And as you can see, this does take up a lot of yarn. So depending on the project that you are creating with this motif, make sure that you get enough yarn. So let's see here. So we're finished our corner. Okay, so now we have a few stitches along our side. So what we're going to do now is in between each of these stitches is where we're going to place our next puff stitch. So we're just going to place our next one in between those two there. And then we go in between the next one, the next space there. And that is what you're going to do between each stitch. So, one, two, three, and then I've got, yeah, I've got one more before the corner. So we have one, two, three. Now you can certainly work into the stitch, but like I said, I like the way it looks nestled in between each other. So where we previously had five stitches between each space, we are now going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So, so now we've come to a corner, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So every time you come to the corner, you know what to do, right? Typical stitches into your corners. So there's one puff stitch. And we do a second puff stitch. We're going to chain two and then of course go back in again. So you're always pulling up and pulling up. Okay, and I'm just going to finish off this corner here. Okay, just like that. So the corner is now really going to be prominent, okay? So see, now in between each of your spaces, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So you've increased the number of stitches, and that is creating a side. And so that is what you're going to do all the way around. You're going to place one puff stitch in between each puff stitch until you come to your chain two space, and you're going to create a corner. Repeat that along each side in every corner, and then at the end, you're going to place that last puff stitch in and slip stitch to join your round. And I will meet up with you at the end of round number four here. Okay, so I'm just finishing off round number four with that last puff stitch in that first corner and then I'm going to find the top of that puff stitch and I'm going to slip stitch to join. Then I like to work over into that chain space. So round four is complete and definitely look at that hexagon shape. I just love it. So we now have 48 stitches all the way around and generally, round four 
is where I would stop uh, for the hexagon shape. So of course you can keep repeating rounds and creating your corners in the corner. The thing with the hexagon shape, as well actually as the octagon shape. So if you haven't seen the granny octagon tutorial I did, I'll also leave a link for that in the description box down below. With these types of shapes, you can only go for so many rounds before they start to buckle and ripple because it just starts being a lot of stitches that are in here. Now, especially this one because we are using the puff stitch. So there's a lot of loops in there. So, um, and in a future project, we'll talk about um, creating larger hexagon shapes for other items that you can create with them, but that will be for another tutorial. You could do another round, like maybe round five. Like right now I can see that it's going to start to ripple. So that's why for this particular project, I'm going to leave these as cute little coasters. Look at that. Or if you were doing this in a lighter weight, softer yarn, you could stop here to create several motifs for a blanket, for example. Now, like I said, I'm going to make these into coasters. So I'm actually going to do one more round and add a little border. So what I'm going to do for the border is I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to go in between the next puff stitch and I'm going to just do a single crochet stitch. So nice and simple. So I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three, and into the next puff stitch space. I'm going to single crochet one, two, and three, and into the next puff stitch space. I'm going to single crochet. So it's just giving us that cute little kind of a mesh stitch scalloped edging there. Okay, so again, chain three, one, two, and three into that space. I'm going to single crochet, and I'm just going to take you all the way to the end of that corner there so you can see what we do. So in between the stitches, we're all about going in between the stitches for this project here. So single crochet, we've got one more, one, two, and three, and single crochet there. And now we've come up to our corner, so we are going to still chain three, two, three, we are going to single crochet and then chain three and then go back into working between the puff stitches. Okay, so that way it'll still kind of keep that corner, the integrity of that corner looking pretty cute. And that's it, that's all. So it's just creating this cute little roughly effect around the edge of our hexagon and Bob's your uncle. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this round and then I will show you the final result of my hexagon motif that I have turned into a coaster. Okay guys, so I've come all the way around and just into that very first chain stitch that I, the chain space that I had gone into, I'm actually just going to go in there I'm going to single crochet and then I'm just going to slip stitch over and then chain one and this is where I'm going to snip my yarn. Just like that. And my hexagon shape is complete. Now you can see it's starting to ripple. So this was going into round number five. So that is generally what tends to happen. Um, as we do more rounds in these types of motifs. So I'm just right now going to kind of heat block it with my hand here. And uh, there you go. So it just, these little chains just create this little ripple effect, which is what we want, like a little gentle ruffle. And that is my hexagon coaster. And here it is without the border. If you want to, you could just do something really simple like a single crochet. And that's it, the puff stitch hexagon motif. I hope you enjoyed working on that. I will be curious to hear what you guys are gonna use your motif for. I'm sure many of you are gonna get super creative with the projects that you're gonna come up with. Now, as always, if you have any questions, make sure to pop them for me in the comment box down below. 
And of course, you can always reach me directly by emailing me at info at crochetcrafty.com. And if you guys like this tutorial and want to see more tutorials like this, please do give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I am on the right track with the types of projects that you would like to see. And don't forget, come say hi to me. I'm on the socials at Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. And if you are new here and have enjoyed hanging out with me today, I invite you to press that subscribe button. Come hang out with me every Wednesday morning when I upload a brand new tutorial. And as always, guys, don't forget, come check out all of the fun stuff on the website, crochetcrafty.com. If you're looking for sizing charts and things like that, you will find those there. They're free downloadable charts that you can use. And we've also got some free written patterns as well as links to my Etsy shop. And don't forget, sign up for the monthly newsletter because you get to see a lot more of the behind the scenes photos of a lot of the projects that we've been working on. All right, gang, that is all for this week. I hope you have an amazing day. And happy crocheting as always. Make sure you take good care of yourselves. And I'll see you guys in next week's session. Bye-bye.